Hey everyone, my name is Enya, and today my guest here is wrestler, actress, performer, queen of Twitter, and former AW Women's Champion. Formerly Twitter? No, former champion. No, the queen of formerly <laughs> Twitter. Formerly Twitter, now, Twitter anymore. now it's X. We still call it Twitter. It's still Twitter. So, Nyla Rose. What's up, everybody? Thanks. Glad we could finally make this happen. Yes, thank you so much for being here. This it's, is amazing. It, it's amazing that it actually happened. <laughs> it's been a long time yeah, in the we, making. We got it cleared a while ago, but just our schedules are so crazy. Yeah, because we're moment. such busy women, and we're you know we're we're making things happen in the world. So <laughs> exactly, we're making things happen. Yeah. So finally, we're doing this. I'm <laughs> really happy to have you. Same. I so. Let's dive right in. <laughs> oh. So you were actually the second ever AW Women's Champion, which was a huge milestone for you know for everyone, for the company, and for you, I would imagine. When that happened, and still to this day, do you feel like it was such like a burden of uh, responsibility to like start a timeline of champions like that, or did you not really think about it? It always is a a, a burden, if you will. Uh, I don't I don't like the term burden because it's such a negative mm. word. But it is a huge responsibility. You're a champion. You are representing a company. You're not just representing yourself, but you're representing an entire locker room, an entire company at all times, no matter where you are. When you're in the entertainment industry, when you're someone in the limelight, as you say, you are in the spotlight, right? Like all eyes are on you. You're under a microscope at all times. When you're a champion, that spotlight is zeroed in. You are on the stage by yourself and, and I, I use that as, as a phrase because there's so many people that make things happen even the people mm -hmm. we don't see behind the scenes but yeah being a champion you are zeroed in and, and you are the representative so it's a huge responsibility yeah and uh the first ever champion was Riho mm -hmm. and I know that you yourself before you definitely have wrestled in Japan also um and you had a whole program with her would you say the Joshi style influenced your in-ring style also um you know, I never thought about it till this moment, but yeah, it probably has. Just with how much time I've spent in Japan and understanding a little bit of the difference in ring psychology there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good observation. <laughs> Thank you. A little bit of introspective uh, journalism going on here. I, I never would have thought of that, but yeah, you're probably absolutely right. Yeah, well, do you want to elaborate on the difference of the ring psychology? like? In general, what is the difference? If you nope. can put the no, okay, no, <laughs> <laughs> no difference actually. <laughs> um, it's, it's it's hard to it's really hard to paint that picture without peeling back the curtain. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm probably gonna shy away from that one a little bit. But but there there are some very very nuanced things that are a little different how we do them than how yeah. uh, they do Joshi style in Japan. And um, I've never had the privilege to wrestle in Mexico, but they're probably done a little bit differently in Mexico just from what I see when I do yeah. watch Mexican wrestling. So it's just uh, uh, the culture of wrestling from all over the world. Things are a little bit different, but always the same. Yeah, and in that same timeline, pretty much in the like early stages of AEW, they were bringing in a lot of Joshi mm -hmm. talent, and they were pretty much the first American TV company to bring in Joshi wrestlers like that. So, do you want to see more of that in the future? Would you like to work with more Joshi wrestlers? Oh yeah, for sure. I've never shied away from. I work with anybody, anytime, <laughs> anywhere. I even love working with people who aren't wrestlers per se, uh, just because they bring such a different outlook, mm -hmm. and things get to be a little bit monotonous when you're going through the rigmarole of wrestling. It's a good way to keep things fresh and different. And then if you're not used to working a certain style, uh, it's very helpful in that way to change your repertoire, change how you look at things. And then you can approach things from a different point of view and you just heighten yourself. You're constantly improving yourself. Yeah, and talking about different cultural backgrounds and influences, you are one of the somewhat few Native American wrestlers on, on TV, again, in the huge TV company. Is that important for you to showcase in your presentation, and how do you channel that? Uh, it, it was important for me to kind of showcase that, and um, just from a uh, entertainment standpoint, I thought the, the appeal of uh, leaning more into my Native American 
heritage was a little bit more showy with like the mm. fringe and some of the imagery, you know, with the loincloth, the handprint, the, the, the symbol on my arm for all the Six Nations. It's a little bit more show, not theatrical, but like a little bit more uh, pageantry, if you will, cool. which is something that we see at powwows when you have the different categories, when people come out and they have the jingle dancers <laughs> and they're wearing all their regalia. Um, it's very showy. The beadwork is just out of this world. But yeah, like I don't, I don't really shy away from anything. A lot of people forget that I'm black. I'm black too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a black indigenous woman, and and uh, I just saw it leaning more into the Native American side of things. Because we don't really see that that much. But I'm very vocal about all my sides. Yeah, and yeah, you know, all your sides. And we're you know cruising to the next question. So you signed with AW in 2019. And you were the first openly trans woman to sign with a TV yeah. company, with a TV wrestling company. And uh, yeah, I would also imagine that gets a lot of response like from the community. And I would imagine people hold that representation very closely. Do you feel like it's something that you had to actively think about? Like, oh, I'm going to be a role model for those people. Or do you feel like it's kind of put on you and you kind of have to accept it? I honestly did not think about it because like that's so far removed from me as a person and my mm. personality, I literally never think about it. Like, more people care about it than I do. <laughs> I just wake up in the morning, I brush my teeth, I put my drawers on, <laughs> and then I leave the house. I might put on a few more clothes and just under Sometimes. You know, draw <laughs> teeth. But, you know, like, I get dressed, I leave the house, I don't think about it. Everyone else on Twitter yeah. is talking about it and it's a big deal to them, and that's cool. Uh, except for when you're negative and hateful, yeah. don't like that. Yeah. But it just seems like it's 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 more important to so many other people. I'm just trying to live my life yeah. and do my thing, chase my dream, provide for my family, raise kids who you know know right from wrong and will contribute to society. I'm just trying to live my best life. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been mentioning social media throughout this whole conversation and let's not talk about like the haters and all that uh but you've also been using social media to your advantage to connect with the fans and to further certain rivalries like you had your whole beef with serpentico over social media so how did that happen like how did that come about that's real like, <laughs> it's, it's real to me that's as real as it gets um i don't even remember at this point <laughs> it just I, happens i don't even remember he claimed <laughs> Now, he claims this <laughs> tiny little snake brain that stupid, it, stupid all, snake, man. <laughs> it all stemmed from the burger incident <laughs> when Britt Breaker had her coronation ceremony for winning yeah. the title. She had a bunch of Brit Max that were sponsored <laughs> by, by a certain uh, burger clown. I don't know if we can say these things, <laughs> but uh, we had a tray. We had a, a plethora of beef patties, if you will. Excuse me. I'm very passionate about oh, beef patties. <laughs> I may have gotten a little <laughs> irritated. Uh, that Plus, they're allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> no proof aside from the video footage uh, from Dynamite. I may have gotten a little irritated uh, at, at Brit being the center of attention. And I may have had a tantrum. That's <laughs> what they say. Um, but because the burgers were spilled and balloons were popped and I might have kicked someone in the shin or two, allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, apparently that's where this started for him. <clears throat> okay, I guess. <laughs> okay, hater. I don't remember. <laughs> He's just always been annoying it. So, who knows? Very fair. <laughs> and that did spill out into real life. We saw you at FanFest with signs. <laughs> Telling Serpentico exactly what he is and how he is. Um, but on a bit of a more like serious note, if I can, because I'm such an obnoxiously serious person, um, there's definitely like an intergender aspect to that. It's a rivalry between a woman and a man within the wrestling company, which doesn't usually happen in TV companies, or doesn't often happen. Was that in any way important to you, or was that in any way a problem with people? And would you like to have more intergender rivalries? Uh, kind of circling back, anytime, anywhere. As, as AEW, we haven't really televised a lot of the intergender stuff, mm. but it is a part of pro wrestling. Yeah. We see it all the time everywhere on the indies. When you are training, your trainers are almost always going to be male. You know, but the, the men are in there with the women, the women are in there with, with the men. Um, and it just is what it is. It's just wrestling. So if there's ever an opportunity, if he's 
stops shaking in his boots <laughs> and wants to sign Finally. a contract. I'll Sorry. fight Snake Man. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. His skin's kind of clammy. I don't want to touch me. I don't know. I got to think about this one. I got to think about this. And another thing that's definitely part of your presentation, especially like on social media and where you're a little more uh, personable with the fans, is comedy. Like you're, you're definitely very, very funny. We can't deny that. Uh, but you're also in your in-ring presentation, you're this powerhouse. So how does that connect? How is it possible to not take yourself seriously and still be this serious force in the ring? I don't know. It just it's a, it's a further extension of myself. I don't take myself seriously about very much anything, <laughs> even in my personal life. Um, life is too short. I just like to enjoy myself. Um, I, I do think a part of that stems from uh, me kind of doing things backwards, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas most wrestlers, they come up, they wrestle, they enter the entertainment industry that way, and then they go off and do acting. I came up, I did acting, yeah. and then I came over to the pro wrestling side of things. And while I've, I've done everything, I did dramas, comedies, all that, everything in between, comedy was at the forefront. You know, I was a comedian, I was a comedic actress before anything else. So I guess my brain is wired to find the humor in, in, in anything. Yeah, and like you mentioned, you did some acting before wrestling. You had a pretty major role in a TV show in, in 2016, if I'm not the mistaken. The, the main role, your show. So you did acting before wrestling, like you said. It's interesting because I actually saw this like bit of video today where Effie on his podcast were talking about how he's a good wrestler because he loves film. And a lot of wrestlers think wrestling is the storytelling, but he thinks it's the tool of storytelling. So mm. what's your what's your take on that? Does your acting background influence your view of wrestling storytelling and like, how does that work? Uh, probably. I too think it's a tool of the storytelling uh, because I try to have everything help convey a, a message or if you, you know, a certain thing, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, Everything from my entrance, like my entrance music, that's, that's the first time that you are interacting with me as a performer. So even the music has to have a connection to the performer. A lot of people will pick a song because it's cool. <laughs> and it, okay, that's one way to do it, yeah. but there's gonna always be a little bit of a disconnect, right? But like, it needs to have a certain vibe and, and get you like in the mood, because that's, that's the prelude to what you're gonna see when you watch a movie trailer there's music in that to kind of get you in the vibe of what the movie's gonna be. How many times have you seen a movie, or let me let me rewind, how many times have you seen a movie trailer and it's got a certain vibe and then you go to the movie and it's got a totally different vibe yeah. because there was a disconnect because they picked a cool song. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing, right? Uh, when you're a wrestler, the first time you're coming out, the first time you interact with the fans, they're gonna hear your music before they even see you. So even from that, when I've been that corner, the first time you see me, you need to have a story of what you're in for. So I try to have all of that tie into the story that I'm going to tell you. Even if the story is, I'm about to beat some ass, <laughs> that's the story. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and like you're saying, uh, wrestling is pretty much a combination of so many different types of media, and that's why it can be, you know, applied to different types of media. And especially AW have been doing a great job in doing like sports-related charity events and featuring superstars on um, like talk shows on like game shows. Do you think it's important for wrestling to transcend its bubble? And how how are we making it more mainstream, or are we wanting to make it more mainstream? I do. I, th I, I don't know that, and this is my personal opinion, I don't know that we are doing those things uh, to start doing those things because wrestling has always done those things. You know, if you go back and you look in the 90s, you had wrestlers on Family Feud. And, yeah. <laughs> like, wrestling has always been a part of pop culture. It's, it's society, for some reason... That's resisted it. <laughs> that, ...that puts pro wrestling in this certain box and if you look at the fans and the fans are so fantastic when a wrestler shows up out of a wrestler's place like they show up on a random <laughs> television show yeah. um china on third rock from the sun people went crazy because yeah. <laughs> there's their favorite wrestler on their favorite sitcom and it's like now wrestling has bridged that gap right well we've always done that <laughs> it's like don't don't shy away from what you love. 
Um, I feel like in American society, in American culture, there's this pressure to be this sophisticated adult <laughs> and put aside childish things. And I feel like, unfortunately, wrestling kind of gets lumped in with all that. Yeah. And you watch it in secret. It's like your dirty <laughs> little secret. Guilty pleasure. That but like, everybody loves wrestling. <laughs> Luther Vandross was a huge wrestling fan. One of the greatest performers, artists, singers ever was a huge wrestling fan. He would stop. Listen to me. <laughs> Luther Vandross would stop what he was doing in the studio and turn on wrestling. If this grown ass man can be open about the passion of what he loved, okay. why do you who works at the bank have to don't tell nobody <laughs> I like to go to this I like to go to collision. Don't don't tell nobody I got tickets for dynamite. Oh, live it, love it. Yeah. And another big part of that is also bridging the gap with like certain audiences because you know the, the other tv company has been doing um reality shows targeted at women and girls specifically and then you had your rivalry with jade who had the whole betty section then who did the entrance with her sorority and like it's it's a big thing to attract more women to wrestling so uh do you think that's been working have you noticed the increase in women's audiences and like how how's how's that going i don't know if i've noticed an increase because I don't have the data analytics <laughs> um, but I have noticed women being more vocal mm -hmm. about their love of wrestling it's so awesome to see especially with the, the Hills community and watching that steadily grow like every week it's growing 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 mm -hmm. and it's so awesome to see women just be more open and more vocal and yeah to that some women are like I've never watched it before, but then I saw this and like, I'm, I'm in. And it's like, it's, it's really cool to see that yeah. constantly grabbing up new fans, but then seeing people be able to be like, no, I like this and I don't care what anybody thinks. Maybe it's just me, <laughs> but I feel like you kind of saw the same thing with uh, other sports like football and baseball. There was a time where you look out in the crowd like all dudes, right? Yeah. And then somewhere, like, it, it, I don't know, the 90s, like, you just started to see more and more women, and it just, it grew. And, like, nowadays, you have, like, all women parties for the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's, like, it's crazy, and it's awesome. And, like, I feel like you're starting to see that now. We're, like, mm -hmm. on, on this boom of just women being like, no, we like wrestling. Let's do this. Yeah, and definitely, like, I, I've even been noticed in my time watching wrestling because it used to be you've been at the show and a dude would always ask you, oh, are you, like, someone's girlfriend? Yeah. Or, like, did your husband introduce you to wrestling? <laughs> like, no, we love wrestling, get over it. <laughs> we can like what you like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as opposed to wrestling media, there's another phenomenon that's wrestling in non-wrestling media. Like, we've seen, uh, like, there's a couple of movies about to release about wrestling and then we saw uh glow which was of course some wrestlers were featured on the show and it was like consulted with wrestlers but then we saw like like young rock like we see like non-wrestling production companies making shows about wrestling yeah. do you think it's a good thing and how accurate do you think that presentation should be and does an accurate representation of what wrestling is like harm wrestling in any way i think it's a great thing i think mm. it's a wonderful thing i think it's helping I think it's helping to tear down that wall and let people be like, no, I like pro wrestling as silly and wild and as wonderful as it is. I love it. And shows like Glow, I really truly believe helped with that resurgence in pro wrestling, um, especially again for the female fan base. Yeah. Um, because you're probably watching something on Netflix and you're like, what is, what's Glow? Like, yeah. that, that's cool. I like the word Glow, like neon, <laughs> whatever. You, you put it on and don't even know what you're getting into. It's like, it's a drama first and foremost, right? It's a television drama, it's a series. Um, so you connect with these characters who just so happen to be wrestlers. And then you're like, oh, wow, is this really like that? Well, there's a wrestling show that comes on on Wednesdays and Fridays and Saturday. Like, so you tune into that because yeah. now you want the real deal. So I think these shows are very instrumental and very important. Um, and then from the Young Rock standpoint, just getting able to get a bit of a uh, biography yeah. in, in a different form. So it just, it's kind of two sides of the same coin. Both great shows. 
Yeah, and as someone who has an acting background but who is also a wrestler, is that in your future plans to kind of put the two together and maybe like star in a show or act in a movie? I absolutely would love to. I, I I'm not going to shy from any opportunity as long as it's you know going to benefit me in some way. And I, I know that sounds really selfish. <laughs> well, no, I, I know that means that. I know that's not selfish, but like you know, I got to look at it. it's like the schedule and everything. But as long as it's not something that's going to uh, be detrimental to anybody or anything. Mm. If it's going to be a good project, if it's something worth attaching your name to, um, then yeah, I I'm willing to explore any opportunity. Yeah, and in terms of wrestling, what should we be expecting from you in the nearest future? Do you have your eye on a certain title or what, what's, what's next for Nyla Rose? Need that late? More bodies. <laughs> More pain. <laughs> Outside of that, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I take things one day at a time. Given the opportunity, any title, all titles, it'd be nice to actually have the TBS championship <laughs> where nobody can like claim that they were the rightful owner. Yeah, like what do you mean? It was your title. Thank you, right? Right? The like... disrespect of them putting TBS champion in quotation marks <laughs> under my name. So wow. it'd be nice to have them do that without the quotations. <laughs> Put some respect on Nala's name, all right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're all very excited to see what's next. And thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for being here. It's a little parting gift for you. What? It's a snazzy I did that shirt. Because I did that. Because you did that. That can be found on Pro Wrestling Tees. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm going to wear this today. And yeah, thank you so much for doing this. This was great. <laughs> and you guys, if you enjoyed the interview, give this video a like. I'll leave all the links to Nyla's social media in the description down below. Subscribe, tap the notification bell to never miss an upload. And until next time, goodbye.